What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Black Belt Business Podcast. I'm your host, Elliot Marshall, and it is my goal with each episode of this podcast to share the stories, strategies, tactics, tools, and resources that will help you establish or grow your martial arts school. The Black Belt Business Podcast is brought to you by Easton Online. You can find all of our digital courses, martial arts curriculums, and resources designed to help you enhance your business at easton.online. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Fellas, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. We haven't recorded in the morning in, I don't know. Normally that's me and Mike and Ian, we record in the morning and we record. Yeah, we've Ian. never done that. We've never done it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I got a question that I want to ask you guys. It's super basic. So uh, I was in Texas over the week uh, training at New Wave. Holy shit, that guy's inc- like, I've always known John's incredible, right? But uh, he's incredible. He, he's, he is, li- it's literally like we're living in the era of Einstein, mm-hmm. right? We're living in the era of Einstein for jujitsu. And like, uh, for me, I'm lucky enough to get close, you know? Not, mm-hmm. not as close as like his like tight, tight students, but he'll let me sit there and talk to him. And in our conversation, he talked about wanting to open school Mm -hmm. and I was like well what kind of yeah I was like what kind of school do you want to open (laughs) you know and he was like I was like because like this is very different like what he does now new wave you know with champions is very different than like a for-profit martial arts school and that's what he wants and that's what he said you know so he wants to open like an Easton style school that's what he says interesting that's what he said or he just asked the question Mm -hmm. okay and then he asked me this question. What are the main differences? What are, what are the key points that you need to do to run that successfully, do that successfully? And I don't know that we've ever done a whole podcast on that, huh? right? And I bet you, uh, I think we take for granted sometimes when we're talking about core values, which are so important, right and department heads which are so important we we take for granted how farther into a business we are Mm -hmm. absolutely right Mm -hmm. into a business that we are so what the fuck do you got to do what are the top things that we think you got to do right because you two are the closest to running it like you know mike and ian and i we're way past like running a single school Mm-hmm. Right, and then I know you're not anymore, mm-hmm. but it's this year you still were. Yeah, and Phipps, you're in one mm-hmm. <clears throat> as a DH. What are the top things we got to do? Well, right off the top of my head, I think about the differences in marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, like a school like New Wave, for their niche, I would imagine it's very professionally focused. Like you don't need to really market. You don't need to market to the people in jujitsu, right? Like they know New Wave. It was they're going to show up anyway, right? Um, People who don't know jujitsu, like I remember when I was getting into jujitsu, somebody told me to like do my own research, right? And I did my own research, but had no idea what I was looking at. Like I didn't know the difference between Amal Easton or anybody else. Dan Smith, who owns the school down the street, right? Have no idea, right? so, you know, a school like New Wave, it's everybody knows Danaher, everybody knows Gordon Ryan, everybody knows, um, you know, the people that train there. So it's going to attract the people who are already in the sport. So I would imagine that if you're trying to open a school that isn't going to be that, the, the marketing would look very different. Like you're going to have to do something different to appeal to students that don't know what jujitsu is like that don't know who john danaher is like they're gonna look him up and be like okay what does this mean right they won't know anything about him it won't mean anything to them so then i would think it would come down to how do you create a place that when a first time student walks in they want to stay there they want to sign up i agree 
I'm gonna push. I mean, I'm just gonna push. Oh, Phipps, you go. Wait, what do you? And then I want to push back on you a little bit, sure. just just for mm -hmm. conversation's sake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the question, the original question is like, what do you have to do? What right. do you need in place? And, right. and we talk about this all the time. But the first thing you need is is someone at the front of your building to say hello to people when they walk in, because it's like Jordan says, like if you're brand new, like the thing you need most is just a little bit of encouragement and someone to make you feel like you belong there. Um, and, and you don't know who anybody is. So like just seeing professor john danaher like when you walk in that means nothing to you it's just a guy by yeah. the way i'm gonna like uh i thought it was just new york city that this was possible in mm -hmm. we went to henzo gracie austin and he showed up 45 minutes late no one gave a rat's ass it was 7 30 on a wednesday or eight o'clock on a, whatever time it was at night on a wednesday regular people not champions 70 people yeah damn and like they don't know like you know what do you say to your wife babe i don't know when i'm coming home like because we don't know when john's gonna show right? up <laughs> you know mm. and when jesus talks it's on you to listen mm. right like you gotta be there when jesus like i'm not faulting him at all right i am putting like uh -huh. but i thought it was only possible in a place like new york with henzo's mm -hmm. mm. i mean well, it's the same thing. Go it's, ahead, it's a celebrity factor, right? Like, yeah. you pay a bunch of money for a concert ticket. The band does it. You know, the band's an hour late getting on stage. You you're, care. you're standing there. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. standing there because you pay for the band. But that's one night, man. Yeah. I'm well, talk we're talking about a celebrity every night. Exactly. Anyway, um, go ahead. Sorry. You know, but people are paying for that. And, and that's something like after you set up a front desk, you have someone to greet people, to take them through like what their first day is going to be like, to follow up with them. You also need to have people there on time so things can be expected because normal people like normal non-jujitsu nerds who just want to learn this as a hobby like th they have a wife and kids and they can't explain because they don't even know who john Danner is to right. say hey hey honey like yeah i pay 250 a month um you don't really know when class starts i just sit and wait for it like you have to be on time and everyone has to kind of start adhering to a schedule right you have to treat this like a, a, it's it's just different, you know? It's a business now. Uh, and things things run a little bit more like on a business side of things than like the martial arts side, which can be more artist, right? <laughs> like more arts in the martial arts side. Um, and, and that's a little bit more accepted there. That's what I was gonna push back on you on. Like, mm -hmm. I, I love the idea that you were talking about, mm -hmm. but uh, you gotta do some things. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, great, yeah. That, that was my pushback, so I, I agree. <clears throat> Get a front desk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Step number one, have yeah. a de like have a dedicated front desk is what I would say that. Uh, and what I said to him systematically does everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so let's just review for everyone really fast. Sure. <clears throat> what our front desk does. What does that system of a front desk look like for a successful business. Yeah. Sure. Step number one, answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Call yeah, people back. the phone. Yeah, no, I think it deals with uh, processing leads. Okay. Like at first, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a great um, Like on the marketing side, like, I mean. Like, I think I cut you off there. Say that. Say those two words again. Processing leads. Processing leads. And what does that mean? Processing a lead. So processing the lead means, uh, you know, somebody goes to your website, however they get there, whether it's <clears> social media you set up a booth at an event, um, whatever kind of marketing that you're going to do, anybody that shows an interest in your offering, in your service, in your product, that's a lead. So to process that lead means you have to start following up with them. So as soon as they fill out your uh, contact form on the website or whatever, uh, you need to have a standard follow-up procedure to process that lead. So you need to reach out to them, uh, establish contact, and you got to get them in the door somehow. And the way that we do it is with a free trial class. So we offer a free class to get them in the door. Um, reach out to them. There's a certain follow-up frequency. And and how do we do that? Like, And we track our follow-up frequency through our CRM. Yes, we do. Right? Right, right. Where we are assigning... Uh, tasks or calls whatever you whatever you're see we used to, i think we probably still call them contact logs everywhere right because oh yeah they yeah. still are yeah mm -hmm. even though we're using a new system that doesn't call them contact logs they call right. them a task probably yeah but we've 20 years contact logs mm -hmm. so um we create a log in some way that says hey mike phipps call jordan shipman tomorrow mm -hmm. at 
Three. And what are the three ways we follow up with people? There's three ways, correct? There are three ways. So it's... It depends on what contact information they'll give you, mm -hmm. um, but the primary way is text messaging. Okay, you know, but then the other ways are email and phone. That's it's so interesting how times shift, because we just like when I was running Denver, it was just call, mm -hmm. and then we got a texting, then we used Google Voice and just to kind of supplement, mm -hmm. and now it's all text message. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say most. I mean, this generation, I would say most people probably prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Like, in fact, I, I even think there's an argument to be made that uh, people want just like automated messaging. Like they want to fill, they want to send a text message and then just get an automated response back and get on with it. I a hundred percent agree with you and I don't <laughs> let our clients do it. No, I fucking hate it. Yeah. Well, I don't think it should be the only way. I don't think it should be the only <sighs> Those way. Those people don't show up. Really? Yeah, you, you have to reschedule a ton. If mm. I actually talk to a person, think about your life. Oh, you're right. There's like some accountability, accountability. there. It's like I made an agreement with an actual human. human. Yeah. Whereas if I made an agreement with a system, I don't give a fuck. I'll miss it that all makes the a time. Lot of sense. Yep. Yeah, right? that makes a lot of sense. And now they're back in the cog of you uh, following up again. And that costs time and that costs money yeah. and that costs all this stuff. So I agree with you and I know you are AI fucking like, well, I think it would be cool though. If like, if you filled out the contact form and then immediately got a text message that said, Hey, we just got your, your information. Like somebody is going to be in contact with you in 24 hours. I agree that that is I great. Like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that is great. But I really highly disagree with the, uh, I think if it's all automated, it's, all automated. it's not as personal as we want it yeah. to be. You, yeah. You need to build some rapport. Yeah. Because that, that, look, mm -hmm. and let's understand, uh, and I, I'll even go this far. The rapport that you start building in the setting of the appointment w is going to help with the sale. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really where it pays dividends. Right. Mm-hmm. Explain that more, Phipps. You said you said it pays dividends. Yeah, well, I mean, to circle back, first of all, to your point, like if, <clears throat> if you know you're texting with a bot, you just don't feel like I, I'm not obligated to follow up with this bot. I'm not obligated to follow through with my word. Um, but like when someone's like, hey, hey, this is Jordan from Mason Training Center. You know, like we got you booked for your first trial class. It's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Looking forward to seeing you. You know, you're like, oh, sh shit, Jordan's going to be there. You know, Jordan's going to be like asking where I am. He's going to be calling me up. Um, so then being there but then you also have that like established like you've had this little bit of communication with jordan like you know his name he knows your name and a lot of the time they'll be the person at the desk when you come in um and then that just makes the sale easier because you've already had this conversation and for the most part when people walk into the academy specifically with martial arts it's like they're nervous they're mm -hmm. they don't know what this is they are generally stepping out of their comfort zone so like your lifeline is this person named jordan who just like only gave <laughs> you their name and helped you in there and they're gonna help you with they smile when you walk and it's like oh hey man oh hey elliot i'm so glad you're here man hey we're gonna get you in this gi we're gonna get you fitted and i'm gonna pass you off to the instructor and it's just like that is bridging the gap it's getting you over this like raging like rapid river of, of discomfort into your first class which is still going to be uncomfortable but just like that help you just like it's a psychological thing i know jordan helped me and now i feel like more connected to him and then when it's time to start talking about money um you know this is someone who i've already had like a small degree of trust set up so uh just giving your name and helping that person from from the moment they submit their contact form to the the moment they get passed off to the orientation instructor and then you find them right after class you sit down you start talking about everything it's you know like you, you feel like this is the person that you know here and, and they've helped you you know, and now there's a little bit of reciprocation going on. And I would say even more, uh, one of the things that I train, the, that we train the clients on, and it's in our videos, uh, when, <clears throat> when you become an affiliate member of how to do this, is you ask them, why are you coming in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, hey, you're coming in. So that uh, the number one thing is somebody's coming doing, like, you, you want this coffee, this French press for a reason, because you want to make coffee, is it going to solve my problem? Right, yeah. right. So, when, and then when you show them that you're go, like, "Hey, Phipps, why are you coming in?" Oh, I want to lose weight. Great. Are you? How much you want to lose? 
20 pounds. Awesome. Okay, great. We can totally help you with that. Boom. And then the whole thing that you say happens. They go, they do the class, they come back. And you can ask this question. Phipps, can you see how this is going to get you to lose that 20 pounds that you've been trying to yep. lose and can't seem to? Exactly. And now you're doing this really magical thing of solving a problem that they haven't been able to fix. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is what I think a lot of martial arts schools miss is, um, or especially jiu-jitsu schools, and, and, uh, is that you have this black belt mentality. And you think you have this white belt mentality, but most of us don't, mm-hmm. right? Most of us don't. You know, you have this black belt mentality, hard. right? Of I have the good juice. Yeah, I, I I have it. You should so want to come hang out with me. Yeah. Right. You should. You you should. Why? I'm the. I got this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rather than I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna give you what you need. What What do you need? I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. And I think in that is why I don't like the the whole thing automated mm-hmm. and why I do, that's why you, you have to stick to this old school actually talking to someone because you get to find out what they want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, so much of the, the benefit of martial arts is the, is the human to human interaction in the community. And like, just botting your way to try to like get someone to sign up it mm-hmm. is not going to really give them what, what you're offering like yes you're offering you're going to teach the martial arts but like someone's going to join your community right like you want to show them like this is good like from point a all the way to point z like you're gonna have human to human interaction and not human in india correct (laughs) no right not not human in india (laughs) yeah right like and look there's certain like I, i i agree for a lot of things that's probably works you know but you need someone who is in your school who loves your school and can answer some questions if that person, with, with real, with like, I know this from firsthand experience. And they believe in they it. They believe in it. Yes, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's a great word. Um, <clears throat> so this lead process thing, mm-hmm. right? I want to go back to something that sure. you said earlier. In this whole lead process thing, you said website. Mm, yes. And people butcher their websites. Yeah. I mean, in this day and age, if you don't have a good website, you just look incompetent. What's a good let, let's talk about a good website. The number one thing I see people butcher their on their website, well there's two. One they talk about themselves. Oh. I'm I'm great. Yeah. Right. I am this gold medalist and Yeah, well like we said medalist. at the beginning to your just average person that doesn't know anything about the martial art is right. that's not going to mean anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think you hit the nail on the head earlier. It's like I think your website needs to talk about uh, because look, there's I'm not saying that there isn't somebody you, with a unique set of needs uh, that might come into your school, but more often than not, like these needs are very archetypal, right? Like everybody is coming in with a, I don't know, just call it like the same 12 subset of needs. And I, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I have those memorized or anything like that. Right. But thinking about what problem it is that you're solving and then displaying that, showing that on the website. Like I think our website, you know, shows this is how you get in shape. This is fitness. This is community. Like Phipps would be more equipped to speak about this than I would. But I think you're right. Like I think if you just make it a biography about who you are, it's not going to mean anything to anybody. I think you need to have that somewhere on your website, right? Like we still have about Elliot, about Mall Easton somewhere on the website, but it's not front and center on the front page. You have to click a little bit. Yeah, you have to click a little bit you because have to click a little bit the, the, to find that what what I did and what them all did, right? As, mm-hmm. as it's for the know. people who know jujitsu, right? You right. know, they understand what a lineage is right. and like why it might why matter, it or like, or who cares, you know? But uh, but it's not what we lead with. It's not front and center, mm-hmm. you know. Phipps, he 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 <coughs> talked about the overarching idea of this, and, and you handle this kind of stuff a lot because you're marketing. It's the idea of an ICA, an ideal customer avatar, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, and we've done this exercise a ton, right. like figuring out for Easton Online, who is our ideal customer avatar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I do. I might have a lot of it memorized because I've gone over it. <laughs> yeah, so much you probably clients, would. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's been a while since I've looked yeah, at it. Yeah, for sure. So just to find that, ex- explain that idea, Phipps, as, as a marketer mm-hmm. and, and, and explain it in a way like for any business. And then we'll bring it back into ours, right into this martial arts world. You know, of, of the things that are really important. Again, the things that are really important when you're thinking 
about opening a door and saying, I'm going to offer something to the public. Yeah, well, it's understanding your ICA, right? Your ideal customer avatar, like the person that you are most likely going to service. That's what it comes down to. It's not the only type of person that you will service, but it's the people who are most often going to walk through your door. And once you understand who that is, you understand what your like unique value proposition can be. Like, what are these people looking for? And a lot of time it's, it's super basic. Like you're talking about you know, moms and dads, you're talking about people who just want like a little bit of confidence, a little bit of, of fitness. Um, let's look at Lamborghini. Okay. Lamborghinis. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, cause people's ideal customer avatars are way different. Mm -hmm. What's Lamborghini's ideal customer avatar. They know it's probably male, mm -hmm. right? They and know rich it, and rich, right? They right. know that person's probably 50, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Late. Cause that's when most people get rich. You, you know, they know that person probably lives in California, <laughs> right? You know, right. New York or some suburb. There's not a lot of Lamborghini dealerships right. in Denver, mm -hmm. right? Like when we, when we stay at Newport Beach, there's a road. I, we drove by yeah, it, right? right. Yeah. Where it's like Lamborghini, Maserati, Bugatti, boom, 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 right. boom, right? right? And you're like, oh, that's because there's billionaires here. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know? There's more Tesla factors yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, way more Tesla. Yeah. So you start with like the gender, yeah, the age, mm -hmm. the income, mm -hmm. yeah, where they live, mm -hmm. how many cars, how, how much money do they make? The income I already said that. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, are they married? Are they not married? What do they look like? Mm -hmm. Who is that person? And we get real specific, mm -hmm. right? We get real specific. So let's help them out. How for jujitsu? Let's just stick with jujitsu for a sure. second. What's the ICA? How old do you think the average person that you're going to go talk to is on the internet in your marketing? What do you think, Phipps? 24 to 34. 24 to 34. I agree. How much money do they have? Over 50K. Over 50K. Male or female? Dudes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. Dudes. It's dudes. Uh, whenever you clip this out, <laughs> make sure it like, you know, make sure the first thing that happens is it goes, Dudes, <laughs> with your head nodding like this, and then go to the information. Okay, Listen, if you do martial arts, you understand. Like, yeah, it's guys. Yeah, and let, let's talk about this for a sec. But everyone goes, oh, but I want this. I want girls. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. Sure. Great. Yeah. You know, uh, ICA doesn't mean OCA, and OCA is only customer avatar. Yes. Right. You know. Yeah. For Lamborghini, it does. You got to have a fucking quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I think ICA is just is something to aim at. Right. Like you know, like when you create your marketing, you can't create your marketing. But George Jitsu is for everybody. everyone. It's open to everyone. It's not for everyone. Ooh. Correct. I love that line. Yeah. It's open for everyone. It's not yeah. for everyone. It's not. Mm -hmm. Why? It's not everybody's thing. Mm -hmm. And when you try to be for everyone, you end up no one. No one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you end up no one, right? Yeah. So realize who you're for. Yeah. And then portray that on your fucking website. Mm -hmm. By the way, did I tell you, I just cursed and it made me think of this. Did I tell you this? We had an Eastern online client want to work with us and then they saw a clip where uh, we cursed. Right? Probably me. And they're like, yeah, I can't do this. Whoa. Yeah. That's, well, that's not our ICA. That's not our ICA. No, it's not <laughs> yeah. our ICA, but I'm just like, man, what kind of jujitsu school are you running if you can't handle a, a curse word every now and then because <laughs> you know what kind. I, i've been to that yes. yeah, and, been to and it's okay yeah it's okay because that's for other people right you know, there's people who will want to go to an academy like that so great do you do that's you. great yes do you huh you know but you're not us correct yeah you're not us we stopped i did not uh kyle told me this i didn't bother to reach out yeah, no, like, it's hey, true. Sorry about that. Yeah, because I know I curse sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, look, we're not like a rated R academy here, right. but like, if you're gonna, no, we're not talking about the cat. I'm talking yeah, no, online. Oh, well, I know. Still, yeah. oh yeah, I see. Even you're just like meet working. With me. right. Yeah, you're gonna right, meet right, with right, me. Right. I curse sometimes. Yes, so sometimes. Maybe, sometimes. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. We curse sometimes on this podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you don't like that, then you are not our ICA. True. It's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. So I stop wasting my time trying to make that person be a client. For sure. Yeah. Time, money, right? All that mm -hmm. stuff yeah. that, that kills you. There was a quote I heard uh, long ago that 
I've subscribed to for a long time is it, it doesn't matter how many people don't get it. It only matters how many people do. And I really like that because I think it's, it's that, mm. I think it's really easy to get caught up. Like, um, I remember in the early days of, of the school of Easton Longmont, uh, you, every single lead, like you, you act like you have to sign them up, like, because you don't have the numbers yet to kind of give you that, um, that confidence, like, nah, it doesn't matter. And it took me a little bit to get there. And I had to kind of recall that quote in my mind quite often. And then it became something that uh, whenever I would see a front desk employee, like going above and beyond to like try and get somebody in the door. And it's like, man, at a certain point, like the cost of having them here, having them be a part of the school uh, is, is greater than what we can accommodate. So yeah, I think that's important to remember as well. Man, I just went over this in a, in a, in a leaving the school concept with one of our clients. Mm -hmm. Their retention's at like 3%. Oh, it's amazing. Yikes. It's great. Oh, that's great? 3% of the school is quitting every month. Oh, three. I thought I, you meant they were keeping so no, 3%. Okay, you said their like, retention oh, was I'm at sorry. 3%. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Sorry. So was, what would that be? Attrition, attrition is attrition, at 3%? Wrong okay. The retention is at 97%. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, 97. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. That's great. Right? It's amazing. But he's spending hours calling these people that are quitting. Mm. And I'm like, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm like, yo, bro. If we creep over five, if we start getting close to 10, I'll let you do that. And I, you know, but if we're, but right, but this is going to happen. Yep. You open a business, people are going to quit. So they stop buying your product. Mm -hmm. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Lamborghini, Bugatti, all the, right? Like they, they yeah. switch from Lamborghini to Bugatti. They don't like their fucking Lambo anymore. I've been using the car thing, yeah. right? Like whatever. Mm -hmm. This happens. Yeah. Well, especially to understand that in something like jujitsu, like. When we think about how long it takes to go from white belt to black belt in this sport, mm -hmm. you know, and the only exceptions are the talented athletes who, you know, win world championships. But at, that's at even six to seven years. Yeah, exactly. It's still a long time. <clears throat> right. So if you think about how long does anybody stick with anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, I mean, just think about how many things are there out there in that world that people stick with for that period of time before moving on to something else or losing interest or evolving or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be a smaller percentage of people who stick with it. And I think like we kind of have to remember that a yeah. little bit, you know, I, I actually want to bring this back to like, we're talking about building a school, right. From scratch. Like mm -hmm. this is something that you have to understand as the business owner is like, jujitsu and in muay thai if you're running that in your school like these things are hard <clears throat> and people show up to your school because they want to be able to defend themselves they want to be in better shape they want to have confidence but these are things that are not easy to gain like a black yeah. belt right it takes a lot of time and most people are going to fall off for whatever reason it's too hard they get injured they don't have time they don't have money it's uncomfortable and you life. Have, life, 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 exactly. Babies, you, you have to be ready for that, right? You have to be marketing. You have to be bringing people in. You have to be selling because you are going to have attrition and you can't save everybody. And, and anybody who's trained for long enough, you know that like, look to your left, look to your right. How many people on your left or right were there on your first day? Maybe one, you know, out of the 50 people in a room, like maybe you, you one of them was Me there when sus. I started. Yeah, ex mm -hmm. exactly. Me and right? sus. I, I, when I think about when I started, like I started with one of my best friends, he's still training, but like no one else I trained with at the time was still, is still right. training, you know, none of the white y'all loved it. We love it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, no, y'all loved it together when you started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so you have to, you have to be ready for that. This is. It's, it's different than cars. It's different than products. Because, yeah, people will switch products for whatever reason. But this is like not only is it a product that you have to create and recreate every day to make people like want to keep coming. But <clears throat> then there's all the outside factors that are going to pull someone out of here. You know, there's the internal factors within, within them that's going to pull them out of it. Um, you have to be selling. You have to be marketing. You have to continue to bring people in, recognizing that the people you're looking at in the room, a lot of them won't be here next year, five years, ten years down the road. I think the people that I spent the least amount of time trying to get back into the school were the ones who told me it didn't work for their schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look, one of two things, one, look at your schedule. Like, do you, 
genuinely have enough offerings. Like if you've got 6 a.m. classes, noon classes, evening classes, and they say it doesn't work for their schedule, they, they were never going to make it a black belt anyway. Right. Because yep. anybody that's going to stick around for a decade that's going to be training with you for 10 years, they're going to make their schedule work for the martial arts. And their schedule's going to change. My and schedule's, schedule's going to change. My right. schedule drastically changed when I have kids. It drastically changed when my kids were started going to the school. Right. And now it's drastically changed that they're playing sports. But you found a way to make it work no matter what. Right. Because it's not something that you're going to let go of. It's something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. I think... I think about that a lot. Now, yeah. on the flip side of that, I think we do think I do think when you sell, and someone says they're unsure about their schedule, like that's the whole purpose of a great offer, like the trial month that we have right. that we yes. explain to you. That says, hey, look, you got to try to put it in your schedule. Like mm -hmm. you can't mm -hmm. see, you can't go and write down paper of where it's going to work, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the difference: is someone leaving, someone coming. Right? When it's someone coming to your school, you have to have a great offer where they get to come in and try it like a month's worth. Mm -hmm. Because that you because it's such an easy objection of getting over this idea of, oh, I gotta see if it works. I gotta talk to my wife if it works in my schedule. Well, there's no way to talk to your wife and see if it's gonna work in your schedule unless you actually put it in. And if you put it in, then you'll try. And if it doesn't work, then we'll handle that piece. Yep. You know? Yeah. So that's you have to be difference. willing to make time for it. <clears throat> right. Just like you do everything else. Like but you have to make time to eat. You have right. to make time to sleep. Like you, you have to do it. The difference on the front end and the back end, how we deal with this schedule thing. Sure. A year in, not working with your schedule, six months in, oh, man, I'm not going to try to convince you that it does. Right. On the front end, I'm going to try to get you to see that it does. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Last thing I want to touch on the website, and this is something that uh, we see with everyone almost when they start working with us, is that lead generator box disappears. Like they, they have it in one spot or on the bottom of the page. Mm, like a little chat like bot a, type thing? No, like, no, no. it's you, the button. It's just not in the, it's not where always they can where you fill can, out their, yeah. you need to have um, your lead generator, name, phone number, email, or the button they click for their lead generator, follow everywhere. Everywhere they cannot get away from that because mm -hmm. we you you got to realize that this that you have like three seconds at most after somebody wants to do something on a website if they can't do it they're gone yep yeah they're gone and they're not coming back yeah and you most likely spent money in some way to get them to come to your website yeah and no, that makes sense I mean. When I travel, like I like to drop in <coughs> at other schools and, you know, when I'm trying to figure out well, where am I going to go drop in, it, I check out the website and within seconds I decide whether or not I'm even going to bother with this school because I can kind of get an impression about who they are and how they run their business just based on stuff like that. Like if, if the information I'm looking for isn't front and center and easily accessible like a schedule. Right. Then I'm like, oh, I'm not even going to bother. Not like, even going to bother. Yeah. yeah. Do I have to call you to figure out unless when the training Donahue. time is? Well, unless it, the, for there's you, exceptions, for us, right? For us. Yeah, yeah. If it's John Donaher or if it's AOJ, like, man, yeah, they don't have their schedule on their website. <laughs> right. And I don't care. I will knock on their door and be like, right. when can I come in and take classes? But most You'll sit people. There like Fight Club, like standing outside. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Like, but most people are not, are not going to have that. Right. And. Oh. That won't work for AOJ and John Donahar either if they're trying to attract the dude down the street. Mm -hmm, It'll attract the jujitsu nerd, right? Yeah. You know, but it won't attract that. Correct. So, uh, yeah, the last piece on the website there is that button, that mm -hmm. contact button. Better fucking follow. For sure. We have it <clears throat> every single page. It's above the fold. So you click on the page. You above never have to fold, scroll. Explain, explain above the so fold. So above the fast. fold, it's the first thing that you see on the page. If you scroll, you're scrolling past the fold. But above the fold is the thing that you'd never have to scroll to get past. It's the first thing you see whenever you enter a page. So there's a big red button that says free class right above the fold and then in the menu as well the global menu that's on every single page so right away you get on to any of our pages on the website and there are two opportunities to click free class and then you scroll down and a lot of pages will have a button further down that you can also click but the one that's on top in the menu you'll always see it even if you're scrolling on your phone scrolling on the computer the you menu is always on it's always you there can't. and it's red it's the yeah. only red thing on the website yes. it's red you know it, it, it screams at you correct to, Oh, I want a free class. Click. Yes. Done. Done. You the, the three seconds doesn't pass. Correct. Right? The three seconds doesn't pass. 
coming to an end here probably. And we got where are we at, Phipps? Thirty five. All right, we're coming to an end. Because we have a go ahead. No, nah, I just so you need a front desk. Yeah. <laughs> you need right. a website. Yeah. Okay. With the front desk, you need them to be able to process leads. That's yes. following up when a lead comes in. That's selling after a lead finishes yep. their first class. You also need an intro offer, right? So we we have a front desk, we have a website, we have an intro offer. Mm-hmm. The trial month. The trial month. The trial month. The free class or free. I see people do weeks, but whatever it is, that one thing that gets them in the door and then that one thing that gets them to stay just for a period of time because your product is going to sell itself over that time. Please, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't fucking have an enrollment fee and say you'll cut it in half. <laughs> where you'll like, please, I, we beg you. Keep we, it simple. We beg you. Or a contract. Or, yeah, yeah. There's no reason to have a con. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're going to be here a minute, fellas. Yeah, I know. We got time. Yeah. We, got time. we don't have to come to an well, end anytime you know, soon. First of all, let's talk about this enrollment fee. I Jordan, don't understand that. We used to do it. Oh. Okay. Is, is the idea there that there's like That's what, a labor cost yes. to signing someone up uh-huh. so you recoup no, it's, that? It's because you don't know how to fucking sell. So it, it's not, not even it's not even offer. that there's a labor and and there's not it's not even that there's an administrative cost to signing someone up and then you're trying to recoup that labor cost. It's like you it's just the want they you use. want something on the sales sheet to make them to make it seem like you're cutting them a deal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On top of that, your sales yeah. are so few and far in between that you need that extra piece to like to, to, to pay pad. that that cost yeah, exactly. you need to pay your, your right mm-hmm. right Gross. it's bec- oh, <laughs> look we used to do it yeah we well, used then to we got it. rid of it for a reason right yeah for sure so let, let's talk about this 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 thing first it hasn't been there at easton for at least nine years you i've never seen it yeah. yeah we all used to be white belts too right this is true <laughs> yeah, so we get better yeah, exactly right we get, we get better, better. Yeah. Get better. but we keep a white belt mind we can still get better Sure. Yeah, right. We, we know some things yeah. and we're going to get better. This is one of those things we got better on was the enrollment fee. What? Like, Phipps, sell me and tell me you're going to cut the enrollment fee in half. Go. All right. So these are our class offerings. Yep. This is the price, right? Yep. Monthly. Yeah. And then we also have a $250 enrollment fee. But if you sign up right now, I'll cut that to $125. What's the enrollment fee for? Uh, it's just, you know, going to help you get going. <laughs> <laughs> So hard to <laughs> How do you answer that question? How do you answer that question? It's going to guarantee that your instructor is always on time, never 45 minutes late, unless we had John Don and her in, in the studio today. <laughs> the way I would answer it is because, well, to get you up and running, we got to put you in the system. We got to put your card on file and all this stuff. And it just takes a little bit of extra time and labor to, to get you set up in this system. $250? This guy's sold Hey, you know, I mean, like, what I do is worth a lot of money, you know? <laughs> Are you going to get all of it? Like, if you need 250 right well, this now, this is I mean, to cover the staff. This is to cover our credit card process. You're the only fees. person this I taught. That's 3%. You know, every time we add somebody to our CRM, there's a cost to it. And, this guy's like, like $2. <laughs> <laughs> this guy sold some membership. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, reaching deep. I'm reaching but deep right now. We're talking man. about five bucks there total. And, well, then add mean, you, and then add the hour you've spent with me. What, I mean, I don't think they're paying you more than $25 an hour here, Jordan. So even if I pay for your whole, your whole fucking hour, we're at 27 Why is it 250 Oh, my God. This is the most informed person I have ever sold on a membership. Right, membership. but I'm just walking no, everyone you're right. through. No, it's, it's tough. Like, we have it's towel bullshit. service. We, yeah. do, we do laundry. You're going to charge me for the towel service. Well, yeah, I'm going to charge you for the towel, but then there will always be a clean towel. That's going to be But I'm going to pay yeah, for it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting it in half, Elliot. It's only We're cutting it. It's a good deal. Yeah, but what if I come back tomorrow? How much is it? Is it 250 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Really? Yeah. You're going to charge me that 250 All right, I'm here tomorrow. Guys, I'm ready to sign up. <laughs> Well, you didn't sign up yesterday, so now you're going to have to pay the full so price. Make me pay you idiot. 50? You idiot. You had a good deal yesterday. No, actually, I'm not. Oh, okay. You know. Can I get it to zero? I'll sign up right now if you waive it. I mean, if you're good at business, you're absolutely going to waive the whole damn thing. Oh, okay. Sure. So there's no goddamn enrollment fee. And all no, that shit stupid, you just yeah. said, if the person pushes hard enough, just goes away. I was yeah. just trying to see if I could do it, but yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, you can. I mean, it, it's hard to sell anything you don't believe in. You can't you know? sell it. And like, so if you can't actually get behind it, then you just need to remove it. Right. Yeah. So don't have it. 
Yeah, Correct. don't have it. Don't have it. Don't have it. What's the offer, fellas? That we use? Yeah, what's the offer? So the offer is $99. You get a month free. And not no, a month not free. free. Sorry, yeah. I don't know why I said that. You get a trial month, and that's a heavily discounted month. It's over 50% mm -hmm. off. What's our charge? What do we charge? We charge 240 right? Something like that? 229 Uh, depends on the program Just that you sign up for. Uh, 229 yeah. 229 yeah. yeah. So it's 230 a month, and that's access to Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu. That's everything. That's what we do. That's and our, you're going to give me my first month for 99 bucks. For $99. And you can try it regardless of whether or not you want to sign up to be an Ultimate member Regardless of whether you want to do jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai, that $99, you can come to any class you want, as much as you want for that entire month, and you can try both of our programs. You can see what you like. You can see how the schedule works out. You can get to know us, see if you like this place, see if we're a good fit. Money and then back. tell them the kicker. What's the kicker? Money back. You mean if I don't like it, you give me my $99 back? As long as you give us a legitimate try. Eight classes in a month. If you do eight classes... We'll what if something back. happens after two weeks? Like, I see it's not going to work for me. I tried it a couple of times. You're going to give me my money back? A lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the time we will. I've rarely held people to that. Yeah. And I've only seen one person God, why sh specifically come in for their eight classes and then, then quote that and then request their money back. Great. And it was a college student. Why should I not, why should I not do this? I got to talk to my wife. We totally understand that you need to talk to your wife. I can chill right here if you want to go give her a call and mm -hmm. talk to her about it. That's totally fine. Or you can put a card on file and then I can honor. Like that $99 trial month, we offer that as a first day right. offer as an incentive to sign up right now when you try your first class. So I get to talk to my wife all month. Yeah, you get to talk to your wife all month. I mean, look, you have nothing to lose because of that 30-day money-back guarantee. So, yep. man, if you if you want to sign up now, take advantage of this offer, you go home, your wife chews you out, give us a call, we'll refund it. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Look, worst-case scenario, you get a good workout. Like, that's it. That's the worst-case scenario is you get a good workout. You've got nothing to lose. What? It's not the worst case scenario. No, you're right. There might be a worst case scenario. <laughs> it's not the worst. Yeah. But that's, I think that's what I've said, though. I've said that in many sales where I was like, look, you've got nothing to lose. Worst yeah, case scenario. Worst case scenario, you pick you up, you drop you in your fucking head. <laughs> you know, you, oh, yeah, you're you know, paralyzed for the rest of that. your life. Yeah, so we're not going to say that. that. Yeah. So, oh, you mean we present an offer that w says that we believe in our product this much. We don't need any extra money. We're actually going to take less. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That you're going to stay for so long that I am so unconcerned about this, uh, what's the difference, 130 bucks mm -hmm. yeah. that I'm losing out on. Yeah. I don't even care. Correct. Yeah, we don't care. We don't care. Correct. Mm -mm. We don't care. That's what real belief in your product looks like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, I, and I firmly believe that it's not going to change everybody's life. Like martial arts is not a silver bullet. It's, mm -mm. it's not going to overcome all limitations, but... For the people that it is for, like I said, it's open to everyone. It's not for everyone. But if it's their thing, it's going to have a positive impact on their life. And it may very well change their life for the better, for the rest of their life. And I know many people that it has. Right. And I firmly believe that. So when I'm selling you this membership, I believe in what I'm selling. And I've gone through jobs where I felt like a liar. I felt like a sleazeball. For like sure. I was doing anything to get to a yes, and I didn't believe in what I was saying. I felt like a politician that I was putting a spin on everything just to get them to sign on the dotted line. And that's not what any martial arts school should be, ever. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's talk about, that's gonna lead right, at, right into the next place where I felt like a sleazeball in, the mar in our business, contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's the same exact thing. Like, be, we will give you this trial month and we'll give you your money back because we just believe in our product so much. We believe in our product month over month, over month over month. We don't need you locked in for a year. If we fail, then leave. I if, need you if, to commit to me though, dog. We are committed to making a good product. <laughs> no, I need you to commit to me to, so I can teach you the gold. Listen, if your product is good, they will be committed to you. That's, that's all it is. A contract gives you an out. As a business owner or as uh, an instructor, I don't have to bring the best every day mm -hmm. because this guy is locked. Boom! Locked yeah. for a year. I don't right. have to be the best today. I could, Maybe next week I'll be the best. 
we look at it is we want every coach to be the best every single time. It's the best product you can create. It's the best class you can run. It's, it's, it's the best front test experience. It's the best. It's everything, yes. you know, and if we fall short on that and we lose members because of it, like we eat that and we try to get better. It puts all the onus on you. Correct. As the business owner to be mm -hmm. amazing, mm -hmm. to show up and, and look, the, uh, I can remember when I, I first had, and I, I can't say I've done all of the, I'm not saying I do all the business stuff, but this one was, this one I remember when I wanted to talk to Mike and Amal mm -hmm. about this change. I was driving home and I used to listen to the Rogan podcast, driving home and Ting, the mm -hmm. cell phone company, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and they're like, and you know, and Joe's like, fuck those shitty contract, you know, like whatever, whatever, you know, I was like, yeah, fuck Verizon, fuck Verizon. <laughs> Yeah, and I'd get all hyped about it. And I'd be like, but I sign people to contracts. Dri mm -hmm. Drive home. Mm -hmm. You know, next night, shit. And I, signed, I still signing people to contracts. It's like, man, why are we signing people to contracts? Yeah. Yeah, why do you believe in yourself so little? Yeah. Well, I will say... <clears throat> It is, it is like the accepted model, mm -hmm. right? And I do think that's shifting more and more now, but no, early not. on, is it not? No. Okay, well, the... the it's, it's not our model. The academies I've been a, a member of have had the same, like, you can cancel with a 30-day notice. Like, so that's been my experience, but um, <clears throat> it's like, you know, it's the way things are done. Right. You know, it's, it's just, it's we, we, we do it because that's how everyone That's how gyms it. do it. Correct. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I... I mean, it's interesting because I remember when we were writing up that story. Yeah. And and I actually did some research into like when the major cell phone carriers like stopped offering mm -hmm. or stopped holding you to a, a certain contract, right? Um, and I think Ting Mobile, I can't remember when it was, but I remember looking it up and like they were one of the first, but it was like a domino effect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone because, went like, after that. Yeah. Because I mean, you couldn't compete. <clears throat> You couldn't compete. Well, otherwise. because they still use the other cell phone services. Like, they still use the Verizon network or the AT&T network, right? Yeah, you still absolutely. got this great network that Ting was paying for. Yeah. So right. Verizon had to make this, like, shift of, like... They all well, did. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it was Verizon first, but Ting used Verizon. Right. Well, then followed AT&T AT and T-Mobile. Right. And, I mean, there's been so many different carriers, and they've been right. swallowed up and merged and everything. But, but I mean, that's <clears> interesting, right? I mean, if you're opening a jiu-jitsu school... And you know the the guy down the street does contracts like you might want to consider like making your product so good that you don't need a contract. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, that's all, a competitive edge. That's yeah. going to be a difference. And that's all it comes down to mm -hmm. is that when you show up and for me, like I had to personally make a shift. Right. Like I, I had this like uh, I'm Elliot. I won all the shit. I fought in the UFC. Uh, right. Like it's it's so cool for the student to learn from me. Mm -hmm. And that is just not the case. It's my privilege every night that any single human actually likes what I'm into, jujitsu, and yeah. then will spend that hour, hour and a half allowing me to show my artist, my artistry on this beautiful art that did so much for my life. Yeah. It's not yeah. their privilege. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. It's not my pri their privilege to learn from me. It's mine that it's Jordan just, Shipman mm -hmm. and Mike Phipps have stuck with this so long that now we're sitting here together as good friends, gonna do this podcast, go sit in the sauna afterwards, right, and just like hang out for two hours, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever yeah. it is, you know. Yeah. And if you can't see that, then you should close your doors for sure. Um, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and and I think you can make it a part of your culture to let the students know that. Like, there's many times where I like to close out any class I teach and say, "Hey, you know, this was the best part of my day because I don't get to do what I love to do most without you showing up to be here." Yeah, for sure, and that means a lot to me. It's an honor. Yeah, thank you. Thank but you, you got to mean that shit. I do mean it. Yeah, no, you I'm do saying, have you, to as, mean the, it. as the person saying it. Yeah, you sure. do have to mean it. You yeah. can't pay lip yeah. service to it. I mean, because they'll. <laughs> you can't be a liar. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be like, very evident. Yeah, it will, it will be, be very, very evident. It'll be because very evident. Because your actions will speak so loud, they won't hear your words. I think one thing I want to say is that what we're talking about here, this is if you want to approach 
running a school like a business. Like if you want to create careers, if you want to have income for yourself, not everybody approaches jujitsu or martial arts or instructing the same. Some people want to have a school, but it's 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 a, a hobby like jujitsu is for them. Um, you don't have to do all this stuff. You know, you don't you don't have to be you know my privilege to teach all of you. You can you can do whatever you want. But if you want to run a successful business, you want to have. A lot of students you want your school to be profitable you want to take income from that these are things that will help you get there <clears throat> and it's a holistic approach yes yeah. like there's there's all these pieces of the puzzle that work in concert together it's not just the front desk right because I've gone to schools that have amazing cultures but like when I walked in the door I had to like walk past all these jujitsu bros like all the way to the other side of the school, knock on the door to the office and be like, hey, is, uh, am I allowed to drop in here? And and like, man, I'm a brown belt and I'm like slightly intimidated walking into this school of people that I don't know. And I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be a first time student, right? But then once I got like, you know, I took a couple classes in there and they treated me like one of their own. I was like, man, this place is amazing. Like if I lived here, I would absolutely sign up here. Yep. But there is that hurdle, right? And then I've gone to schools where I show up for the noon class, open the door, it's unlocked. And the school is literally empty. Like it's literally empty. I remember I like walked behind the front desk, found their waiver and filled it out myself because I, I knew something about it. And then there was like a little sticky note on the front desk that was like, hey, I had to go to the bank. Like, give me a call if you need something. And I'm like, man, if I was a first time student and that was my experience, well, and they might have had a great culture. I don't know. I never tried a class. <laughs> I went I somewhere to, else. I had to teach a class once because the teacher didn't show up. Yeah. I mean, that, that that kind of stuff is wild, right? Yeah. So it's like you can have the best systems in the world to get people in the door, but if you don't have a great culture and if you don't have a, a structure, and this is a whole other podcast, We're right? Gonna, yeah, like this so whole other the whole other piece of this, but I'm just going to touch on this now because I don't think we should let anybody believe that but like this is it, this is, it, this is the secret because we talked about what are the differences and it's like, well, you know, this is a big piece of it too is, you know, if, if you want to have a great culture, you're going to need to define your values. And like whether you have your core values defined or not, you have values, right? You just may not be articulating what they are. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that you articulate what they are so everybody can be on the same page. Otherwise, you're going to have a very disparate culture. You're going to have one instructor that treats people like shit and then you're going to have a really good one. But then you also need structure. Like, man, maybe if you're a celebrity, it works 45 minutes late showing up to a class or whatever. Look, it does, but most would, people, yeah. most people need to know that their class starts at 5:30 and they show up at 5:30, take their class and they need to get home to put the baby in bed. So uh, one thing I'm not going to tell John, like in a I offered help, like yeah. hey, if you ever need help, like, like I'll, yeah. I'll do whatever, right, mm -hmm. to help you. Uh, I will not tell him that he has to start on time. I will tell I would say that the school he needs to have instructors that start on time. He needs to have time. instructors that start on time. And the school has to set it up in a way that it is like enough space on the front and back end of his class that he's going to start late and run late or whatever it be. Yeah. That's part of the system that right. would be needed for the advanced class that he's going to teach. Yeah. Right? Right. Like I, I'm, I, I would never tell – I would never be like, John, you got to start doing this because like that's not who he is. Yeah. That is inherently out of his personality. Yeah. Right? Uh, <clears throat> which is fine and it's the reason he's Einstein and not yeah. for everyone. Totally. Right? Yeah. But your instructor that's teaching fundamentals – Right. It needs to be there at 5.30 and start at 5.30 and, five, yes. and end at 6.30. And then, John, you can start and then whenever John, you want. And then, let's, and then let's, let's say you're going to – and then next is John's class. Mm -hmm. and, then, and that other class is over at 6.30. You might have on the schedule, hey, John's class, 6.30 to 8.30, you know, or, or 8, that hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he teaches for an hour. So that he has an hour and a half to get through an hour-long class. <clears throat> and then the next class is starting at 8. That's a good way to do it. Right? But, you know, by the time – your fundamental students graduate from fundamentals and are able to take the advanced class, they're going to understand. They've For learned sure. the culture. For exactly. sure. They've learned the culture. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Right. So, 
Uh, the next podcast, mm-hmm. uh, we're not going to touch on values because we've done so much on values. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like I we, agree. We have done so much on values. We have episodes and episodes and episodes on values and how important they are. Right. And we still believe this. Yes. We still believe this. We will never not believe this. We didn't touch about anything on the mat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about this. Yeah. Because I'm going to end the podcast. Go ahead. So when you, just so I know walking in next time, when we're talking about on the mat, are we talking about instruction? Are we talking about culture? We're talking about curriculum. curriculum. We're talking about instruction. We're talking about that. Okay. Okay? Because what I'm going to say, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and it's going to piss you guys off listening to this, and I'm going to do it on purpose. You guys teach like shit. <laughs> Most schools teach like absolute dog shit. Do you wait? Do we have time for you to talk a little bit about why? Because I'm curious. Yeah, you show moves. You show this move, that move. Train done. There's no. There's no learning how to do jujitsu. There's no learning how to move, and that's all we do in the beginning. We start showing moves in the advanced class. Sure. Now look, you have to show moves along the way, right? And you're like, Elliot, what are you talking about? And we're going to get into this. You know. Uh, but if I the person doesn't now. know how to move, no move will work. Right. You know? Now look. I was at New Wave all week, Mm -hmm. and all he did was show moves, because we know how to move, Mm -hmm. right? There there are no blue belts in there. There's no white belts in there, right? You're talking about a high-level, high-competition, advanced room and up, right? right? Like, good purple belt and up. That's it. If you're a white belt, you can't be in that room, you know, because you don't know how to do it. But most of you, most of you listening to this podcast teach like shit. I'm going to get some hate for that. Make sure you clip it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's really interesting. That there's, there is a whole other podcast there. Cause I mean, there's, I feel like there's a lot of evolution in the way jujitsu is taught. These Needs days. to like, be taught. Yeah. Not to the champion. We're, We're not, not to talking the champion, to the champion. But I think about all the different ways that we teach that. Right. And, you know, I think that there's, and maybe I'm going too far in yeah, depth, we, but yeah. But you know, I mean, there's there's flowing, there's positional we're gonna training. We're going to get into all of this. There's gamifying it, like there's all. Yeah, we're going to get into ways. all. Of, we're yeah. going to get into all of this. Go ahead, Phipps. So this is the this is the only thing I'll say on on all of this is that a lot of people treat class um, separate from from a product. Your class is a product, right? It needs to be something that you can recreate. It needs to be something that kind of sells itself. So that goes back to what we've talked about with building a school. Like we'll talk about tempo and structure and everything, but you have to consider like the class is the product that you are selling, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Mm -hmm. so it's gotta be approached like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Good talk. Great podcast. Jordan Phipps. Thanks. Thank you. You know, uh, as always, go to our website, Easton.online. Uh, we have a bunch of free stuff there. right? We have a bunch of free stuff. Go check it out. Fill out our contact form if you would like some help with any of this. And we will uh, get on the phone with you, contact you, and make sure that we try to help you. Um, if you want to start out softer with us, just follow us on Instagram. You know, Follow us on Instagram. We put out some really good nuggets there. You know, We've stepped up our real game. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, uh, go follow us on Instagram. You can jump into any, not Jordan's, he's not on the gram. Uh, but Phipps and I are down to answer questions on the gram. If you want to hit us up, uh, that is the best place to hit. If you, if you have a specific question, fire Marshall 205, Mikey, Mike, underscore Phipps, Mikey, Mike, like Marky Mark, (laughs) underscore Phipps guys. We appreciate all of you as always. We hope you love this as much as we do. Have a great day.